All right, we're back again. Everybody's gone. Okay, now I got to work on the. Uh, now I got the shock situation handled for a little while. At least the stud part is. I got to work on my brake rotor here. So EBC makes a nice big dollar brake rotor here, but they don't make a rear one. They only make fronts. Those dumbasses can't make a rear one to go with a front one, but eh, must be a theory in there somewhere. So we're going to make a rear one out of a front. Basically the difference is it's whole size. Front rotors have 5 16 bolts and rear ones have 3 8 There you go. So all we got to do is punch the hole out here for 3 8 So we ream that out for 3 8 And most likely we have to increase the counterboard to clear the head. So that's what we're going to check for right now. So we're going to use a Torx head flathead screw here. So Colony makes these a really good quality. So that's what we're going to use. And the head is definitely bigger than what the counter bore is in the disc. So we're going to have to make it work. So this one here is about 730. Back to the mechanical one. Somebody Somebody's modified my caliper for me. That's why you always check for zero. Okay, so there's our 730. Measure to see what we got right now is quite a bit less. It's a uh, 640. So 90 thou too small for the head, but you need some clearance around there too. So it'll be three quarters of an inch time you're done. Alright, so now I'm going to find a counter bore that's going to give us what we want. So we get back over in our counter bores again over here, like we did before. We're going to find something in the 730 to 750 area. Not an inch. That's, that's too big. I don't want to have to use an end mill, so... And we got to have something that's going to be a square bottom. So this one's 800, but it's got a pretty good radius on it. So the radius is going to be under 730. Nope, we're about 650, so that doesn't work either. Right there. 690. There's an 813, and about 730 on the low spot. Yeah, that one will work. What else do we got? Another 800. This one has a little bit sharper corners to it. Makes it more flat. Yeah, so that one's a good 790. Probably on the flat, 780. This one here. Quite a bit less because it's got big radiuses on it. And we're right there at about 720 ish. This one was 730, 728, but it has a little bit of radius on the corner here, so that would clear. So we can use this one with nice radiuses on it, which makes it a little cleaner looking than a square cut. Even though this is square cut right here. So if I had a 750 with a square cut, it would work also, but I don't see something like that. Because all my cutters are radius cut. I purposely make them that way. Okay, so we got two different cutters we can use. Ooh. Either way, they're going to be pretty big. So 
lots of cotton. Two eighty. Three ten. Okay, this one has the correct pilot in it. It's got the radius in there, which I like better. So I just have to move the pilot back down a little bit lower here. This one's a little bit more stronger, but we don't need that. All right, we're going to use this one. So I can give me a little small Allen here to move this over a little bit. Smaller than this one. Move it all the way down. Now we'll work on the center in there and do it like that. All right, so this is ready for cutting. So we're going to work on a nail over here. Get ready to go. Probably this has got these two flats in here, which are not helping the situation at all. No, that doesn't hold it very square. I'm sneaking in over there. Ah, oh, it's Fred. Just a bunch of rags in. Everybody wants to know what happened to you. They thought you died. I got married. You got married and died? You got married a long time ago. Fix that thing. Here, put it on. Give me something to do with it. I'm working. No, don't kick that swing arm either. Hello. All right, we're back to work. Enough interruptions for one day. Okay, I gotta get this set here for my disc cut. It's about there. So this has buttons that stick out right here, so we can't just sit on these. We want to sit on this surface when we cut it. So I'm going to use my spacer blocks to go like this to support this while I cut it. So you just got to make sure you got one that goes over the hole, a couple other ones over here. We should be good to go. Just got to make sure it sits flat, that's all. All right. Are we going down in there? Set our depth here. Hit right there. Set our zero. Give yourself about 50 thou depth. Give myself 40. Okay, so we cut 40, we should be good. We're on slow speed. Need a little oil. This is stainless, so we need a little bit of oil on it. Well, you cut slow, it should cut decently. All right, let's get this over here. Put a little junk on the floor. Here. Yeah, too much junk around here on the floor. Lots of damn junk here in the way. Let's keep me from putting my camera where I need to put it. Someone's in there helping me. Uh, this is supposed to be up over here. Out of the way. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and cut this thing. Get over here where we can actually see something maybe. There we go. Get a lot of my way. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go down to get my stop. Turn the cut speed way down. Chips. A lot of sharp edges here. Okay, so we didn't go quite low enough here. So that looks like about another probably 20 thou. So we'll go ahead and get a little more on our stop here. So we just give a little more right here in our handle. We're at 40 right now. I'm gonna give it 15 thou more. So now we're at 55 thousands for depth. more. So now we got a spot face down. So now we gotta go ahead and get the actual depth figured out here. That's it. So we're at fifty two thousands. Now we gotta move over to the next hole and do the next hole right next to it here. And we gotta do all five of these. And then we gotta cut the hole bigger after that. down. Just keep going in a circle. Eventually we'll run out of stuff to do here. <clears throat> Once it starts grabbing real hard that's when it bottoms out. You can feel it. When it starts cutting on a full surface. Right now we're not flat see. We're on top of this button right there. And just move it over a little bit. Go. Down now, flying along. Nothing like taking a two hundred dollar brake rotor or whatever this thing costs to something and having to modify it to make it work on a stock application. They don't offer stupid.
a little bit deeper now so you didn't quite clean the hole out there. Give it two more thousands. So I got these done. So I had a little bit of black in the bottom of the hole and you can tell it wasn't all the way down by how it was cutting. So I had to go down until it hit the bottom. So two of those we went two thou deeper on. Whoopie do. Now this has a nice sharp edge on here right now and I'm not sure how we're going to fix that problem. We'll have to use a die grinder to do it. Got to knock the burrs off. I don't know any other way of doing it. You definitely don't want to leave the burrs on there. I know that. Okay, now our next problem is we need to make the hole bigger with a reamer. So we put the 3S bolt through it. So that's our next problem. Turn the way over here. So we got to turn the air on up over here and change out this piece here. Fix that one these days. The brand new regular is sitting right here. At some point, it'll get put on. Not today, though. We just keep putting that off. Okay, so we're gonna see how much we're gonna do in this hole right here. First thing I do is see what size hole is in here. Okay, 516, so it looks like they got an extra 20 thou or 15. It's at 32 and 12 of standard, so 20 thou bigger than it should be. So that gives me a reference of how big to make the 3 8 hole. So you go one size over 3 8 1364, I'm guessing. So instead of being 375 over here, we're going to be about 89. This looks like a nice dull one here, so this ought to be fun to use. I'm sure this is going to cut really well. We'll see. see how much how easy this is going to ring through all right so we got one hole done our bolt in there now. See? That's 
how much clearance they run on everything, nice and loose. I got the paint it black and those holes are right there, so that's what they make black paint for, I guess. It's stainless, so it won't rust, at least. Okay, I'm going to knock out the other ones now. That's pretty good, surprisingly. Take our burr here to deburr the hole with. So we have to deburr this edge right here and then the back side here where it's all sticking up. On this side here, it does a pretty good job of deburring it. This side over here, not too good. It's still got a burr sticking up. So it just kind of moves the metal around, but it's still got a burr, pretty good burr on it. So we use a bigger one. I'll use a lot bigger diameter one. That's a lot lower of an angle of attack. And it's a finish motor. I got 90% of it away. Still just a little bit on there. You take a fine file and knock off the little burrs that are left. So I'm going to have to get a short one that goes in here, a little 6 inch one, which isn't right here. I have to go to my toolbox to get those. Alright, and we have to deburr the outside edge now too. Okay, so to do the outside edge, I'm going to take it back and we're going to try to use a <coughs> A grinding bit just to not radius this off and hopefully not make a mark across the whole face. We probably will. But we'll see. We'll try not to. All right, we'll be back. Okay, we're back here. We're grinding this. So here's my air grinder. Got a rotary burr in here. It's a half inch bit, barrel shaped kind of. Let's try this out. See how it works. See if we can control this pretty good.
All right, so that knocks that burr down pretty nicely right there. So now it's not cutting your finger when you're in there. So you can see how this one's sharp edged over here, maybe. I'm not sure. There's some pretty good burr sticking up right here. You can see how this one here, it cuts some. This one over here, they're all gone. There's some over on this one, too. All right, so we're going to keep doing it all of them. Just got to control what you're doing, that's all. Test is you run it right across it. If it doesn't catch on anything, you're good. Pretty smooth. It's a little bit rough in these edges down here. These edges need to be hit a little bit now. It's only a couple spots where I get a little bit high, but pretty good. Now you can clean your rotor off and not catch rags on and everything and peel up the edge. It feels kind of crap when you do that. Okay, I'm going to do the holes a little bit. Same on this other side too where we're at it. Yeah. That one needs to have a file on it. That's a big one there. Yeah. You can do it just right and get in there. Trying to take off any metal on there, just trying to get the burr off the very top edge. So the rag goes around nice and smoothly now. I'm getting more of a radius up here than I really want, but it's good enough. So now it's been all converted. So this has to be taped off, and you're gonna have to paint these things black in here so you won't see the edge. We'll do that later. So for now, we're gonna mock it up on the wheel. So we can actually get our brakes and stuff figured out and how they're really going to be on the bike. I got the frame all painted black too there, so where I ground on it the other day. So we got that all done. Keep doing a little bit here, a little bit there. Eventually things get done. 
Well, I need a couple of wheels that are buried over here. One of them. And there's the other one. Place for it right now. Okay, so now we gotta do our bolts. someplace. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get this done here. All right, so got our bolts here. I'll find my extension, my stubby. So it's a Torx head. So that works like that. These are a lot better than Allen heads because these don't slip out like the Allens do. They break them off. So there's a lot more torque. So that's why I like the Torx head better. Allen's aren't all that good. Now we start torquing on them. Okay, this is our rear one, so it should fit on here, hopefully. Look at that. Here's the fit. I shouldn't put chrome on chrome without any kind of lubricant. If it gets tight like that right there, you want to keep going in. When you come back out, that's when they like to stick on you. So I need some spray. Playing with fire. So a little CRC. That one's starting to stick a little bit. Gonna take it back out. This is only mock-up, so later on we'll do the, uh, we'll uh, put a lock on them. Put this one back out. at all. A little bit of lubricant. All right. There's one there's for it. If you stick it in the thread, you lose the thread, which means the bolt and the hub will be junk. Sometimes they break off trying to get them out because they weld themselves in good. That's why it's best to lubricate them a little bit. A little bit of brake clean on there before you put Loctite on there or clean the hole out and you'll be good to go.
too. Brake rotor's on. All right, so that's what that looks like. Yeah, it doesn't even look that bad with the ring around there. It's not going to corrode because it's stainless. Could just leave it. It doesn't look that bad with the chrome on it. it you know, it's dull like this. So it just kind of highlights the bolt. You probably could leave it. We'll let it decide. So, you know, that's what it looks like on there. That's our brake rotor for now, but we don't know what we're going to use for that yet. So, Alright, so there's that one. We'll get more interruptions already tonight. It didn't take long. Hello. Hello. All right, more interruptions. Every time I turn around, I'm interrupted for another hour. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the front brake rotor on. So we get to open up the new box. Yeah, there's the part number if you want one. So there's a front one that's gonna go on the front. So I don't, have to, I don't have to modify this one. All right, so this has the correct holes for the correct bolts. All right, so here's our front wheel. Kind of looks like the rear wheel, it's up skinnier. All right, so here's our front bolt. Ah, damn, that is sharp. See, they don't deburr or anything. These things are just razor sharp. That actually going into that hole? Yeah, it goes. All right, so that goes into the hole there. Nice and loose, flops all over the place. Wonderful. Okay, first thing I do is spray the holes. All right, there we go. It actually fits pretty good on the hub. That's surprising. Most of those things are pretty loose. You've only got about five federal clearance. That's nice. So the hub manufacturer and the disc manufacturer got together and made stuff good. I suppose the same guy in Taiwan made everything. It says UK on the disc, so it's hard to believe they actually communicate with each other that good. Of course, we've got to mix up the world by putting American hardware in there. All right. All right, there's our front one on. Pretty good now. Front wheel. Pretty good. All right. I still got to do a lot of work on the fork yet, too. Every time you turn around, I got to do more, more modifications on parts. Oh, well. Now, the front brake rotor or caliper, we can't get our caliper. We're trying to get a six piston PM caliper. Yeah. Not available right now. A couple more weeks, hopefully. As usual, you can't get what you want when you need it. That's why I like stocking a lot of stuff, but I don't stock with big dollars of stupid crap because I don't have to worry about motor parts. So for the rear brake, we went ahead and got the uh, front, uh, rear brake set up here. So we're trying to get the matching six piston version for the front, but I got a four piston like this on hold just in case the other one doesn't come in the next couple of weeks. So my supplier will actually hold parts for us, which is good. So this has to weld on the swing arm, the drag link. So it goes onto the brake here to hold it. This hangs down, down like that. Caliper here, drag link goes forward. So this goes on there. So we're gonna make this fit the rear wheel. Or hopefully it fits the rear wheel. We don't know yet. The front caliper we don't have, so we don't know yet. Now the front caliper should be the same as the rear caliper for how it's made. Good 
plastic. Alright. So they got some nice ceramic pads in here, or metallic pads, so they're going to chew up your rotor real nice. Those are the spacers there that just fill on the floor. Alright, so this should fit on this brake. There you go. And I got my whole hand between the spokes and the calipers, so that means it clears. So that's a plus. Okay, so that should fit. Now I gotta check the rear wheel. Make sure it fits. Ah. If you want to know what these wheels are, these are cheap Taiwan wheels with 60 spokes in them. Luckily I found the front one to ruin match. There's only one vendor that had each wheel, not both. So I just lucked out the same manufacturer made the wheels, but you had to get it through two different suppliers. Okay, so this is our rear wear brake. It's got lots of clearance on the back side, so I got no problem with that. So that's a big plus. So here's our mounting bracket. See if we can score up the black paint. So for 550 bucks, you can't even afford to give you chrome hardware. I cut into the profit margin a little bit. At least they're giving you some good American bolts, so I'll give them that. We didn't get crap. We did get crap here. They give us lock washers. What the hell do you need lock washers for in your brakes? That's what they make Loctite for. Stupid mechanical lock washers. At least these are thick ones. They hold up a little bit better, but they still fall apart when you torque on them. All right, I'm not using these. I'll use them for something else, like holding shock covers on or something valuable like that. Okay, now this is universal, so I can either go this direction or this direction. We're on a Sportster, so we're going to have to be on this side of the bike. So this needs to go forward. So this hangs down, so it goes like this. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it goes right in there. Look at that. That must be that special uh, locking compound powder coating. Yeah, they, they make it real nice for moving your hardware together. Force it through. There we go. See the black transfer there. Make it fit. All right, try to break again. Ugh. Failed the first attempt. I'll try the second attempt. So you notice on a sports, they give you the nice ugly ass part number to look at, whereas on the big twin, you don't get that. That was nice of them to do that. It's 
Porsche guys like knowing what the parts come from. That's what they do with the Porsches. Okay, now let's see if that actually fit on the bike now. Yep, fits in there. There's the rotor bolts. Okay, so I'm to put a spacer in there. Probably need something about a 3 eighths of an inch, probably get you close, maybe a little less. Alright, so that's how that's going to look, except it'll be on the bottom. down here when it's installed. <clears throat> Alright, so that all works in there pretty good. So, at least it kind of fits together. Kind of, sort of. And this is our drag length that we'll have to make work. Alright. Throw this crap back over there in the box. Okay, so we got some shock studs cut. Couple wheels worked on. Check the brakes. We accomplished a little bit of something today. Not nearly enough, but it all adds up in time. So anyway, there's your two wheels. Look pretty good. Shocks are still a work in progress. Lock-up rotor we're not going to use. These we're going to have to work on these still some more. I need to start bending these things, but I'm not sure how much yet, so we're gonna wait till I bend them. <clears throat> I gotta get the shock bolts mounted in the frame first. <clears throat> so the swing arm is the next big deal we gotta deal with. We have to figure out how to get the. Uh, what am I doing on the swing arm? I'm either gonna have to cut the studs off the swing arm, or I'm gonna have to um, machine them. And that's a pain in the ass to do when it's part of a swing arm. So we'll have to figure out that one. That'll be a couple days project. We'll figure it out. So. These here have to look like this when we're done. Right now they're not even close. So. We got to uh, be turned down in diameter, shorten up for length, and the threads redone. These threads weren't too bad. These ones over here are all chewed up. So, they look like crap, see? So I need to work on that. So, if I'm going to machine these, I'm going to have to hold them in the middle of the machine over here, like this. I have to clamp them over here on the table over here, but on the other side. And then I got to move this the mill head over about 45 degree, and then I got to take that big ram that's in the back that goes forward about a foot. And I'm going to move it way the hell out of here to get back where this is. And then we're going to have to bore it. So that means we got to take our boring head over here, this thing right here, and we'll have that right on top of the stud, and we spin it. And we have our boring bar over here, right here. And this will go around in a circle like this and it'll cut the it'll cut the stud down. Just drop it on down. So instead of boring a hole, we'd be cutting external. Same thing, basically tool-wise, but the opposite way of doing things. So anyway, I'm not sure what is quicker, doing it that way or cutting these studs off, putting new ones in there that are already made to fit. It's a toss-up, they both work. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Like I said, they poke all the way through, so you have to cut them off on both sides and then figure it out. So, I don't know. I haven't cut them yet, so I still got an opportunity to uh, try it. And like I said, i got to come up with two more of these, though. I don't have enough. I only got two. I need four. So, if I, can, you know, if I want to go that route, we'll cut all this shit off and try to get out of the swing arm. You know, we gotta, I'm not sure how good the welds are, so... That can turn into a major job, so you don't know. Then you got to weld it all back in. You know, everything's an unknown, so we'll figure out what we're going to do, and we'll do it. More interruptions again. All right, that's it for this for tonight.